This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Guys, I'm so excited about today's video. So excited that I was gonna wait until my hair didn't look bad, but I, I couldn't wait any longer, so here we are. I'm going to be judging movies based only on their opening shot. This is the second time I've stolen an idea from BookTube. They they do wonderful things over there. Jack Edwards did this thing where he judged a book by its opening line, and now I'm, I'm doing it with, with movies. The twist is that I don't know what these movies are. I had my friend select these over the last week, so I had no idea what the movies were, so I truly am just reviewing the opening shot. At the end of all of this, I, I'll have like an answer sheet and I can look at what the movie is. It might be embarrassing, but I, I thought this was a really fun idea, so I think we should just do it. Just start this off with clip number one. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying really hard not to guess the movie because that's, again, I'm not trying to do that. An establishing shot of a big world. Is this really the opening shot? I'm gonna assume it's animated. I don't think there are any places that look like this. The music is also very, you know, animated kids film music. I am gonna go ahead and say this is a terrible movie. <laughs> I mean, it's boring to start the film off with just establishing the world. It's like, why, why don't we start it off with a bit of a, something we don't expect, you know? It does look like a really exciting place, but the colors themselves look really dull it's like weirdly unsaturated for how interesting the setting is i'm just kind of already bored and a little underwhelmed by what this film is giving me all right clip number two <laughs> 2007 new york pair of high heels and some royalty free music. The only thing that I don't like about this opening shot is the music. I the music really turns me off. It sounds like something out of those like awful YouTube family videos, you know what I mean? But the shot itself is interesting. I think it's a great first shot for a movie. The colors look really nice, the production design. I don't know what this is. I don't know what this person is standing on. It's it I don't <laughs> Why would, why does this exist? I like the way the font kind of fades in. Like truly some nice cinematography here. I, I think it looks nice. It's just that music. If there were no music, I would think this is like a prestigious, maybe like David Fincher movie. Like if I want a, a kind of cheesy office space movie, I would, I would hope that the opening shot was a little bit goofier and leaned into that. And so that's what I'm going to say about this film is that it's it gets halfway there it, it's not the best thing it could be but it looks nice and uh is is good technically let's get clip number three we must begin our story sad to say okay I think I already know what the movie is, to be honest. Something about this is selling me Nanny McPhee. I've, I've seen, I saw that movie a lot as a child. For some reason, I remember this chair. It's gonna be really embarrassing if this isn't Nanny McPhee, but I'm like, the, the ugly wall, the, the chair, the voice, is that? What's his name? Colin Firth? Even if it isn't Nanny McPhee, it's that type of movie. It's from that era. And to be honest, no disrespect to Nanny McPhee, but those movies kind of bore me. They did as a kid, and, and I have zero urge to watch them these days. It's just, you know, the British guy, and the, the whimsy, and the... I will say, I mean, it does tell you everything you need to know about the film based on the production design, and, and the, the, the voice is British. And it's colorful. One for like the English majors, you know, because it's just super like book. I don't know how else to describe this. It's just very book. Like that's what this shot is. And I like Nanny McPhee. It's all right. It's not the best thing in the world. It's just kind of disposable. And I, I guess that's what I'll say about this film is that it's like a little bit disposable. We're, ne we're never gonna think about it again. I really hope I didn't just embarrass myself. Okay. Honestly, I really like this so far. I, I think this is a very cool first shot for a movie. It's sort of like, wait, what is that? And then you realize it's, I think it's like a sword being made. It being like entirely black around it. The choice to put the credits around the sword. It's just the music. Oh man, it's so good. It's so, that is a bold opening. It makes me excited to watch whatever it is we're gonna watch. Like a sword, the flames, the smoke, the orange. I think this is a really great opening shot. And and I think, again, I'm reviewing the entire movie now. The great movie. There's a lot of action in this film. It's very thrilling. I hope this isn't like a really controversial movie. Even if it is, I'm like, say what you will about the film, but opening shot goes hard. I love this movie based on the opening shot. Oh shit. <laughs> what? 
I had such a roller coaster of emotions watching this clip. I first I was like Toy Story, and then I was like, no, it's like a maybe it's like a, a chick flick rom com. You see what whatever this animation is. What is going on here? I can't tell if this is like a new mood. There's no way this is new. Who would do this? Simply one of the ugliest shots I, I've ever seen. Not, not I guess not the beginning, but th whatever this house is. Look at the trees, dog. Oh my goodness. I almost respect it. Like, I think this this is the beginning of a really fun comedy, maybe? This is either a really good time or a really unbearable experience, but for some reason, something about the way it starts and plays with your, your idea of what it is, I think that's interesting. It's a choice. It is a choice. That's the thing. It's better. Remember that first clip? That was just dull very cookie cutter. And this is like an artist was expressing themselves. <laughs> Someone was like, this is how I feel. I'm going to paint that into the film. And here we are. I love that the bushes are just copy paste. They all are like identical. <laughs> okay. Whoa, wait, interesting, ominous, a little mysterious. This could truly go anywhere, this this opening shot. I, I like when movies have like a choppy frame rate, it, it makes it look very much like a painting because you're really taking in each individual frame as opposed to everything moving so fast. And so I like the choppiness of, of the waves and the way it plays with the lighting. And then it seems like we get just a little glimpse of a person here. It's going to be something very dramatic is all I know. That's, that's definitely something I can read off this first shot. I think that's a really good first shot though. Why am I thinking it? If it's a horror movie, I think being underwater is a very uncomfortable image, like looking up at the water, but not really moving. I think that's, that is a bit uncomfortable and unsettling. I think that's a great way to start the film. It seems as if it's maybe going to foreshadow something. Why does it feel also like a Guillermo del Toro movie? I'm also going to say good movie. I, I think this is a really, so far, one of my favorite opening shots that we've seen, to be honest. Oh, shit. Okay, to be honest, I think I can sort of see through the blur. And even if I couldn't see through the blur, I think I would know this is a John Waters movie. The music and the, the legs and colors, the neon light coming through the, the glass. I love the aesthetic it, it starts off with. I think it's really strong, really knows what it is immediately. Love the framing of the legs and the lighting coming. Oh, this is just a wonderful shot, incredible shot. And I like John Waters, so... Yeah, if it's not, then that's, it's also a good movie. But I love just the amount of attention and, and detail put into such a simple shot. I love the framing, I love the lighting, I love the music. Pillsbury production, now that's interesting. That's the one thing that gets me is like, what is, Pil what does the Doughboy have to do with this? I don't think that's John Waters now that I look at it. <laughs> but I'm still gonna confirm that this is a movie I would really enjoy. Hate it, don't like it. I don't like this. Colors are dull. The too much going on in in just four seconds. We had clouds and then we had an eye and now there's a, a picture being taken. That's too much. I might eat these words, but it just looks like a boar fest to me. It, it really does. It, this is also very book. It's very book it, in that it's it's one for like the Tumblr English kids. Too fast for my taste. Too too cheesy for my taste. I don't like the effects here that much. Like, hold on the eye for a second. Hold on the eye. Why do we have to speed through life like this? If, if you're speeding through it means that there's too much information in the film and it should have just been something else yep yep love this incredible love this shot the sun reflecting off the cars it, it looks like a bunch of stars the font choice the ominous music. I want to say this will be an action movie. As far as era goes, I'm not good at reading cars, but I want to say it's like 80s. And I typically like movies out of that era. I think this could be, just based on this opening shot, really interesting. It's something pretty serious, I want to say. I really, I really think I would enjoy this movie. I'm already wrapped in. It's a movie about society is all I can say. I mean, that's, that's what this, this painting really gives me. The people around you, your neighbors. I like it. I love it.
fascinating. I actually am completely stumped as to when this film was made. Like 2013, or it could be like the 70s. Who is this actress? She looks amazing is what I'll say. This is a great look. We're going to Las Vegas. Is this, I wanna say this is like Salt Lake City. This is not GeoGuessr. I'm just, I, I'm intrigued. I have zero clue what this film could be. I, I, I have no idea when it came out. <laughs> I do like how long the opening shot is. That's always the sign of a great film. I love the, the kind of confidence coming off of her character. I wanna watch this movie after this. this is, of all the films we've seen, this is the one that I wanna watch the most. It's, there's, it's something quiet about it. Very simple, but like large, you know, there, there's something kind of booming off of her. Just the screen presence she has is just incredible. I was gonna say I wanna watch this, but you know, the way this video goes, I have watched it. This is my entire review of the film. I think this is a really thoughtful, moving film with a great lead performance. Yeah, I love this one. This is, is very up my alley. All right, I'm gonna go with the Goofy movie. I think this is the Goofy movie. I think it's a little by the books is what I'll say. You know, going from the sky into the city, the bell ringing, it's a little by the books. I'm feeling a strong three and a half for the movie as a whole. I think it's just good and cute. Either way, a bit of a basic beginning, um, in my opinion. Not not anything really, n nothing special about this one. Kind of just, you know, your, your run of the mill animated film. Hit me. I'm serious, I can't feel anything. Hit me. I can't do it harder! Had to turn the volume down on that one. <laughs> this is interesting. I mean, you learn a lot about this character in just the first shot. Is this, why is this, is this that movie 13? Is that what it's called? I recognize her from the poster, but maybe I'm thinking of something else. Never seen it either way, kind of going into this one blind. I really, um, I like the first shot. I think the first shot is really bold and you do learn a lot about the character. Confidence and the way she's looking at you. I think that's really interesting. Like you, the viewer are doing this to her. It's a commentary on how we treat actors. I've, I haven't seen this movie. I think the, I love the music. I love how bold it starts off. I like the, the looking at her straight ahead. Colors are interesting. It's really cold and kind of dark. I think I like this movie. I think it's one of those where you're like, I didn't enjoy watching this, but I, I think it's a well-made film. All right, last one. In the middle of the night, I have almost like a nightmare. I wake up and I had forgotten to nail shut the crate. <laughs> I, I don't know why this one is so funny. Just a French person being like, I do this like a bad dream, it's a nightmare. For some reason, I'm like, is this a comedy? Is this like making fun of something? It's such an abrupt beginning, uh, but I really, I really like it. I'm immediately hooked. What is in the crate? What is the pro what has been taken from the crate? Either way, I actually think the the shot itself is beautifully shot. I love the lighting. I love the frame. Again, no idea when this would take place in, but I think it's it's a really cool opening shot. Love whoever this guy is. This character is funny. This is a really funny way to deliver this. I'm gonna hope it's a comedy, and I think it's it's ahead of its time. It's got a great lead performance once again. Great cinematography. A thrilling story about a crate. It's just everything you want. One of my favorites that we've seen today. Now is the fun part of seeing what these movies were. Shot one, which was Sonic the Hedgehog 2. <laughs> okay, that makes sense because that's where the first one ended. I never saw that film, but I, I, I stand by what I said, a little bit dull. Number two was Okja. That makes complete sense. It is a weird kind of like sci-fi movie, which makes the like step thing makes sense. That's so interesting. Why did he go with that music? I never cared for Okja that much. I thought it was okay, but damn, that that's that's funny. Nanny McPhee it was the third one. No surprise there. Number four was Conan the Barbarian. I have no thought. I've never seen Conan the Barbarian. <laughs> I trust it. Yeah, I can see myself liking this. I'm not sure if it's the thing I made it out to be, to be honest. I thought it was going to be something a little bit crazier than that, but Tyler Perry's Medea's Big Happy Family. <laughs> that tracks. I could I could see that, I guess. I will I will admit I've never seen any of the Medea films. It's a big gap, and I'm embarrassed by it. Number seven was The Lure. This is... I've wanted to watch this. I might check this one out. It's a real really interesting way to start the film and I, I stand by what I said I think I, I think it might be a hit for me number eight is desperately seeking Susan I was so off this was not a John Waters movie <laughs> I still like the vibe a lot I, I really want to check it out very 1985 damn I that's my bad
It's my that's embarrassing. Number nine was Harry Potter in the half. Okay, so yes, it was book. I never cared for Harry Potter, as in I never watched it. Um, so, but yeah, I don't like the aesthetic of this. It's just too rushed. Do we even care about the mood? Number 10, Terminator 2. Okay, why did I have a feeling it was something like that? I really, I gotta get around to watching that movie. I can't believe I haven't seen that movie. Number 11 is Showgirls. Dude, oh man, that's so fucking funny. I have wanted to watch Showgirls for a very long time out of pure curiosity. And this opening shot is incredible. Oh my God, I might watch this shit tonight. I might watch it tonight. Number 12, Tom and Jerry, Cowboy Up. Pretty much what I expected, to be honest. Kind of, I mean, I love Tom and Jerry. You know, nothing nothing special. Run of the mill. What, what did I say? Run of the mill. Number 13, was in fact 13. I should really check that movie out. It looks really interesting and, and kind of uncomfortable. And number 15 was Man on Wire. It doesn't look like a comedy. It's actually a documentary. <laughs> actually, it says, no, this fun and spellbinding documentary. I'm actually, I really want to watch this now. Damn, a lot of good movies out there. I found a lot of new movies that I want to check out. Some that I have seen that clearly I had no thoughts on. But wow, I really got to watch Showgirls. I really got to watch that movie. Anyway, this was a fun idea. Yeah, I might do it again if you guys liked it. If, if this was a complete failure, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching. Go watch these films and form your own opinion. And before you head out, I want to thank this week's sponsor, Squarespace, the best place to build a website and make that idea of yours come to life. They have this thing called Fluid Engine, which is a next generation website design system. It allows you to customize every design detail with reimagined drag and drop technology for desktop or mobile. If you're a filmmaker or an artist of any kind, you should probably make a portfolio and Squarespace is the best place to go to make that happen. With the video collection feature, for example, you're able to host video content, organize your video library, and showcase your content on beautiful video pages. You're also able to sell access to your videos with member areas. But to make everything just that much easier, they have an asset library, which allows you to upload, organize, and access all of your content from one place. Oh man, it makes things a lot easier. With the new asset library, you're able to manage all your files from one central hub and use them across the Squarespace platform. But the best part is that you can Go to squarespace.com to start your free trial, and when you're ready to launch that beautiful website of yours, go to squarespace.com slash karsten to get 10% off of your first purchase. Thanks so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video, and thanks for watching this video. I will see you in the next one.